Hi, I'm Daniela Cruz and welcome to Art This Week. On this week's episode, we visit Artspace 111 and sit down with Nancy Lamb to talk about her exhibition, Refired Pow, Nancy Lamb. Now for Art This Week. All of this is a compilation of all the shows that I had. I, and I, I would show at little venues, I'd show at hair salons, I'd show at restaurants. It was probably from like 1987 um, uh, to 1994 or five or six. Anyway, so I did all of these shows and uh, we would do a calendar. I'd be a calendar girl for each one of the shows and uh, that was a lot of fun. And, and I'd always sell out. And I, you know, it's like kind of a no-brainer. So I just kept doing it, and I loved to do it. It was really fun, and uh, people loved it. I mean, and the fun thing for me about this show, another fun thing, is that people have been sending me, you know, text and saying, "Oh, here's the one I got, you know, back when," or "Do you remember this one?" And you know, all of these. I kind of remember them when I see them, but you know, you sit down and try to remember everything that you've done. I tried to guesstimate how many I did, and uh, it was around 1,500 maybe, or maybe even more than that, I don't know. And then there are all the ones that broke, <laughs> or that didn't make it through the firing process. And then uh, a lot of people would say, oh, you know, my maid knocked it off the wall, you know, and it would be like, that would be one that I really loved, you know. So anyway, so there are a lot of them out there. I will tell you this, if I could still be doing these right now, I would be. I mean, it, I had a studio. They gave me a studio at the museum. And, um, but, you know, they kind of took care of everything, which it was just so great. And um, I just had so much fun doing them. And, and also being in the, the museum setting, I had a lot of help, you know. I mean, my studio at home now, if I want to do something and everything's messed up, you know, you have to do 10 things before you can finally get to it, right? You know, you have to wash the dishes and you got to do this and you got to do that. Well, I really love my monkey over here because this was like sort of a breakout thing for me because I always thought of them as very, uh, I did one show that was called Animal Architecture. Is oh the the uh, snake that's back there with the wall of China on it. It was called the. It, I used the word asp and it was asp something. What? Wall asp. <laughs> anyway, um, you know I would put buildings or um, structures with a certain animal that sort of looked like it, like the um, the Kimball camel. You know, the Kimball has the humps and everything. And so that's, uh, after that show, I still wanted to do more of that. And so I, I thought about, you know, building a construction kind of thing with the rebar. And that's why I like that one so much. And the monkey part, it, they're all just, um, some of it's slab, some of it's uh, the pinch method, you know, just hand building. Um, I just was always good at it. Well, and I, you know, I'd spend time with it. You know, a lot of people ask me, you know, how do you make it look like that? Or how do you do this? How do you do? Well, you know, it takes time. I mean, and you, you kind of get lost in that time and that process and, and just kind of let it flow through you. But um, if you spend a little time with it, you can get it to look like that. I used paint brushes on them too. What, what I would do was um, I would paint it all black and then I would dry brush acrylic on it. And so that's why they look like that. But the, the black would be acrylic also. And then, you know, glazing is much more um, complicated, or it's much more time consuming. And everything has to be pristine and clean and if you want it to look good. <laughs> and you never knew exactly what you were gonna get, so. But I did experiment with the glazes too, even though they were commercial glazes. Um, I'd mix a lot of different ones together, like this, this pot here with the alligators on it. That's all glaze. The fish, um, 
uh, and other animals. Uh, the color was what draw, drew me to that, and that's why that's why I, I used a lot of fish and stuff. And but they all morphed into something else, and they got a little angry. <laughs> Some of them were a little angry, like this rhino here. Um, but the blowfish and all the little um, guppies and the clownfish. I have tons of fish books at home. And then, you know, when I, I started working in oils, when I started painting, I really thought that I was going to be painting these bright, brilliant fish paintings, right? But I ended up doing these sort of social paintings, and I tried to infuse as much color as I possibly could, but they, they all had sort of a dark quality to them. I used a lot of, I ended up using a lot of black. Oh, the first party that I went to. That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I mean, my, my standard answer was that um, my husband uh, and I were dancing one night, and he was trying to take a selfie. I met him when I first started painting here. He worked downtown. There were just always a lot of openings, and, and I always wanted to paint people. I always knew I wanted to paint people. And I always wanted to do figures. Um, it's the most interesting thing, next to animals on the planet. And he was, uh, I guess it was like 1998 or something. We were out on the dance floor, and he starts, he tries to take a picture. Of course, we didn't have phones then, and so he had his camera up there. And I remember looking up and thinking, that's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to do a perspective that looked down deep into things and investigated things and um, saw things from a different perspective. And I also wanted desperately to do something different than anything that I've ever seen. And I was also heavily influenced by Hitchcock because I watched a lot of Hitchcock when I was growing up. Maybe it's because I've always been, um, I've always had an astigmatism, like when I was Four, or in the fourth grade, my mother took me to get glasses, and I remember the doctor screaming at her because, you know, he was saying, this kid can't see, and I'd been telling her that for years, you know. But um, maybe that has something to do with looking down deep into to things, but it also abstracts things a lot. And, and I'm not an abstract painter, but I do respect abstract painting and, and art, and um, sometimes when I'm, when I'm doing these, they feel abstract to me, but I also love realism. I, and, and you know, there's a lot of people who have criticized me over the years because they say, you like everything. And it's like, well, yeah. And um, it's expansion to me to like everything, or to, to figure out a way to incorporate everything into what you do, which is what I was doing too. Anyway, when he, he took that photograph, I thought, man, that's what I wanna do. And so I started running around, and then that night, we started doing it a bunch, you know, we would just sort of hold his, he had one of those huge cameras, and I ended up with like a, it was a film camera, I used the film camera for a long, long time. And you know, when I look back over my life and I think about all the people that I've met and all the things that I've done, and I, it just kills me that I didn't have a camera then. I couldn't afford it. Um, you know, printing it was really expensive um, and also time consuming. And, um, and I didn't have a dark room where I could do my own. So, um, you know, I just think of all the images that I missed. And then I, I still think of some things that I've seen, and I, and I think, why don't I have an image of that? And I, you know, and I could pull it out of my head, but it's just kind of not the same. I've, lo I've always loved working with uh, photography. I was always looking for images, and image Instagram is like the most incredible thing to me. Oh my God, the Life Magazine of the 21st century, it's fabulous. Images, 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 images. You can't, you can't, well, I can't get enough of it. Every once in a while, I kind of overdose on it, but um, I think it's probably the best thing they've ever thought of. Although I do like to hold a photograph in my hand still.
There's nothing like that. There's one that's got a really good story, the, the Domino's and Dairy Queen. I was with my husband, we were going to, he had a little piece of land in Colorado, and to get to Colorado from Fort Worth, there was a, a way that you go to Abilene and then you go north, but there was a little town called Claude, Texas. I don't know if you've ever heard of Claude, Texas, but it's a very famous place. And we were sitting at some, it was some gas place and it had a little, it didn't, it wasn't a Dairy Queen, but it was like a stop and go or something like that. So I go in um, to refresh myself and coming out there are these two old guys sitting at a table and I look at him and I think, there's my grandfather sitting there. Although he didn't look like my grandfather, but I, it was just the feel of it. And I get out to the car and my heart is just like pounding. And I think, I gotta go back in there and meet these guys and take a picture of them. And I think that was probably the first time I ever took a picture of individuals where I wasn't at a party. And so I go back in I just said, hello, do you mind if I take your picture? And I'd already taken like 10 pictures by the time they looked up at me, right? And uh, I didn't get their names. I was really sad about that. But um, anyway, I get back in the car. And about two years later, I decided that I'm going to, I have to do this painting. So I turned it into a Dairy Queen. And I remember my grandfather was always playing 42. I don't know if you know what that is. It's dominoes. So I turned it into a domino deal, right? You know, where they're, they're playing dominoes, but they were just sitting there talking. And so I didn't think anything else of it. And um, I sold it right away to a man in Dallas and they did some sort of something on it in Dallas. And a woman calls me and she said, where did you get that image? And I told her, Claude, Texas. And she said, that is my Uncle John. It has to be my Uncle John. So I got to know this woman and come to find out he had just died. And he was in the very first scene of the movie HUD with Paul, Paul Newman. And he received royalties for that movie his whole life. And he was a big deal in Claude, Texas. And she told me that her aunt said that when he came home that day, he said, you know, somebody took my picture today in the, in the stop and go. <laughs> so he, he kind of, it registered with him, but I, I wish I had talked to him more. I wish I had gotten his, his number or his name or just known a little bit about him. But I just always thought that was really great. If you, if you rent the movie HUD, he's the very first scene. He has the very first line in the movie. And uh, I just thought that was really cool. And the guy that he was talking to was his lifelong buddy. And they kind of owned Claude. He had like a 25,000 acre ranch there or something. And, and I just didn't get to know that before he died. But I'm glad I did the painting. I had to do the painting. My heart wouldn't let me not do the painting. We want to thank Nancy for speaking with us. For more information on the exhibition, go to artspace111.com. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. I still got your polar.